How many people went to more than like three talks? Fantastic. Make sure you rate the sessions and the uh, scheduling app. The big takeaways today, I think thematically were, it's a very different time now that interest rates aren't zero. There's this big dilemma between, I think, startups building great technology, which a lot of people at this conference have been doing, and you get this itch to start a company. And there's so much that goes into like building a business on top. We heard for some venture capitalists, you know, they were called this necessary evil. And I think people are starting to realize that not everything requires venture capital. There are some really great software companies in the world that do a really great job selling software directly to their customer base and are totally fine doing that. And then there's some things that only venture can do. If you want to compete in the hardware space, I think that's going to be really hard to do out of your garage in 2024 because the bar is so high. But I do think the things that are powering most of the best technologies going forward is open source. I don't think that changes. It's probably one of the best ways, in my opinion, maybe to Kyle's opinion as well, to find that product market fit in the safest environment as possible. You find a real problem, you scratch your own itch, and you share it with the world. I can't think of a faster feedback loop on building something that is actually useful. The other talks that we talked about today kind of focused on that transition. How do you go from that to validation from the community? You said it well, GitHub stars do not actually matter. And I remember I open sourced a project called No Code. There's literally nothing there. There's a readme that talks about building applications with no code. And this thing has almost 60,000 stars. And I remember the year that that project got launched. There were some people really upset. I think this thing was ranked higher than TensorFlow, Kubernetes, and the GitHub top 10 open source projects. Here I am with nothing there, ranked in like the top three or five at the time of most starred GitHub repositories. You cannot build a business on no code. Maybe someone's gonna try, but there's literally nothing there, nothing to do. And so we know GitHub stars don't matter. And so when you're trying to transition from community to customer, the big difference is one is willing to pay you. Hopefully this whole session, the whole day, I think the talks will be published soon, were helpful for you. But I do think we need people from the open source community willing to continue to step up and build these companies. I do not wanna go back to a world, I graduated high school in 1999, most of the technology was inaccessible to me. It was only when I saw a Linux magazine that there was a CD in the back that made all of this stuff accessible to someone like me. I could not afford AIX, mainframe, LPARs, Sun Microsystems. Those things were out of scope. And honestly, these days, open source software is literally just better than most of the proprietary alternatives. So I think this is where it's going to go. So if you're a founder, if you're thinking about working at one of these open source companies, just know that it's not only about that technology. At some point, you're going to have to build a business. And there's a lot of engineers in the room, some things I learned over the years in this open source game. If you're an engineer at a startup, small company, all people are responsible for sales and marketing. I've met a lot of startups and I advise a lot of startups where only the CEO or the founders are on the road talking about the project. This is literally the thing you build. And if you want to do this authentically, the work comes before the talk. So as you check in that code, as you figure out how to implement the RFC that you've been working on to integrate into your product, go give that talk to the local meetup. Don't be afraid of customers. Remember, these are the same group of people. The same people who open GitHub issues are usually not that different than the people who write checks. And so go be part of that community, including the people willing to actually pay you so that you can continue working on what you're working on. So I'm hoping going forward that people explore lots of models. One thing we didn't explore a lot here because we talked a lot about venture-backed companies, but look at companies like Let's Encrypt. That model of a nonprofit where people want to be paid fairly for their work and can do something at the same scale of some of these venture-backed startups. I don't know if you saw the news today, but you guys remember WeaveWorks spun down. Flux CD, everyone's like, what happens? In this situation, they didn't get bought by a Cisco, like Isovalent and their particular project. They just spun down the whole company and oddly enough, their products were left in flux. What are you gonna do with them? Who maintains them now? Today, they were announced that the CNCF gathered some of the better, bigger sponsors that we have, and they're going to fund the project. And my guess is going forward at some point, we're gonna to have to figure out how to sustain these projects that are not interested in IPOing or being bought out, but having those founders still do the work that they do and believe in without all the company dynamics, because I don't think that's required 
for every project. I thank you all for spending time with us today. Enjoy the rest of your conference, and uh, thanks for spending time with us. Thank you.